Hey everybody, Pete out here, and this is our 2015 uh, Golf Sport Wagon, and we're gonna install some SolarWorks spoilovers. So let's get to work. So before we start doing the installation of our coilovers, we're gonna give you guys a quick rundown of this car. This is a 2015 Mark 7 Golf Sport Wagon. Uh, it's on 17 inch wheels right now, uh, and it's a TDI model, so it is diesel. Uh, it is a manual transmission. Now, one thing that's very different from this generation of a car, um, comparison to the 2014, is that the rear suspension is now a beam suspension, so it has a solid rear beam. Um, in comparison to the previous generation, which was a independent rear suspension. So, when you guys order your coilovers for it, make sure when you in the description it's for a TDI model, not just the standard Golf model, because it will not fit correctly uh, the springs have a different diameter so make sure you guys know that before you guys order away uh, we are going to be installing SolarWorks coilovers so let's get to work because this is Binchy Alice Garage so before we do the installation always remember to get your car ready for install number one we're going to lift it up we're going to do the rear first because it's going to be the fastest uh, since it is a solid beam you're going to have to do both uh, sides at the same time makes the job a lot easier and then we're going to work our way to the front um, big things about this car number one we're on 17 inch wheels on some really fatty tires we're going to go to 18 inch wheels we're going to be using our old beetle wheels that we had on our mark six um, mainly because it's just a nice sportier look and they're 18 inch wheels uh, with a smaller profile tire so when we go low it's going to just look a lot nicer um, so make sure your handbrake is on car is off wheels are straight and we're going to lift the rear end um, break loose all your wheels since since we're going to be doing all the wheels on this i would just break them loose don't remove the bolts just make them loose that way when you're done on one side we can do the swap a lot easier and then go on the other side and then pull the tires off once you're done um, if you don't have a wood chuck make sure you have a wood chuck up in the front it's just for safety reasons if for any reason the car wants to roll forward or the hand or the car and since it's in gear and the gear wants to make the car roll a little bit forward i do live on a hill uh, well my driveway is on a hill so it's a little bit of a slope so it's for preventative measure we always put a wood chuck in the front uh, if we're going to lift the back end first and then when we lift the front we just take the chuck out we're not going to need to worry about it since the handbrake is going to be holding the rear of this car so just giving you guys a heads up all right so now that we have the front end in the air i mean the booty in the air and the front and down there's our chuck as you can see that got the car lifted on pinch welds on jack stands and now we're going to show you guys pretty much the inside suspension here now one thing you guys gotta understand about pretty much mark sevens or anything with the rear beam they're very very simple okay number one there's two bolts up here that hold the strut right up here i'm in mean the shock down here another bolt so you have three bolts on one side that holds the entire suspension however if i unbolt everything it won't drop all the way we need to unbolt the other side. In other words, the shock is actually the entire uh, holding uh, component that holds the entire suspension in place, but both of them do. As you can see, the spring here is in place. Um, you'll see how nice and narrow, this spring's really narrow, so it avoids the tank that's right here. This is the DEF tank. Um, this one right here is for your diesel. So you guys gotta remember that um, this is why the car has a solid beam because of this rear beam i mean because of this tank right here so 
very 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 vital that you guys don't go too low because you have the risk of hitting the actual tank um so just want to give you guys a heads up on that and a quick pointer so it's probably one of the best angles you guys can see here so you guys can see the suspension in its entirety so this is pretty much the what holds the shock on the bottom and then all the way up top you have the two bolts up there and that's it that is the entirety of the rear suspension that holds holds it in place obviously the beam is also bolted to the frame but that's not what we're talking about for lowering the suspension it's literally this one shock that holds it so you can replace and install uh, springs um, during this process you want to get a jack and hold it underneath the spring right here the spring perch and compress the suspension the reason for this is because when you get to the other side and you draw and uh, um, pull the uh, shock out it's going to drop and you don't want that to happen because you can damage or pull lines a little harder than normal so remember that guys so down here upon further inspection just give you guys a heads up uh, hold on okay so this bolt here the nut is actually welded on so be careful try not to break this loose because you'll never get it really break it, unless you want to break it off but you won't cause any damage is that the but the nut is welded to the actual arm here the bolt is what comes off and they're both 18 millimeter just break this one loose same thing on the other side should come straight off okay the two bolts on top they're two 16 millimeters uh, you're gonna need a t25 torx to take off the or break unbolt the carpet right over here you want to take the t25 that's right here and that way you have space and you'll see there's the hole right there for the bolt that holds this shock in place and right now the rear beam is held up with the jack and we're about to take off the uh the shock right now and we're going to repeat the process on the other side so we're over here on the driver's side we've already broken loose the 18 that's on here um now we're going to take off the two 16s that are right above and then this shock should just drop now since we have the beam already jacked up with some tension on it this way the beam won't drop on us as we're going to remove the springs afterwards Socket. You guys can see that the suspension already dropped slightly since it's no longer being held by anything Oops. yeah I gotta do that too before ooh, almost caught that so ooh, almost broke that you guys can see this 
this right here um, this is the light height adjustment for the headlights I almost dropped the beam completely and didn't notice this um, before there was too much tension see there's still enough slack so good thing I had that jack on there if not I would have damaged this already off the bat so you're gonna need a Torx for this guy right here and take that out before you do any more damage or doing any damage so this is held by a t27 and you'll see right here it just lines up in that little hole just like this and then the t27 holds it in place that's it that's what adjusts the headlight uh, height on this guy so just remember that guys swing that back there out of the way before you do anything else or cause any other damage actually no i would put it over here since it can go you now all the way up and down and not worry about it now we're just going to take off the shock right here it'll let me That shock is now removed. Now we're gonna drop the uh, the car so we can get the springs out. Um, this is the part where you gotta be super, super cautious uh, because there's only so much travel these can go. So I probably would recommend breaking this wire loose and then focusing on this brake line travel when, it's, when the whole suspension drops down. Um, we don't want to put too much tension on this line because we can damage it pretty good. Um, again, take your time. This is not a reason to rush. Um, these are almost out. So just again, when you drop the car, drop it nice and slow and wait for it to wait until you feel the springs that come out. Then that's where you want to leave it. Don't try to um, drop it all the way down because you might be you might pull on this line too hard and you can damage it. So here we go. We're making our way down. We're on the other side now. Be... Hold on, Papa. Never mind. I'm gonna hold it here. It still has a lot of flex in it. Same here. The spring it looks like it's not coming out yet. So I'm gonna go down a little bit more. Okay, so it looks like the beam, there we go. It'll stop to a point. Oof. Okay, no damage. <laughs> and that's where we're at. So now the spring can come out on both sides and then go from there. All right, so now we're out onto the shock uh, replacement. Now for this process, it's a little tricky. Um, you need a couple different tools, uh, depends on what works for you. Um, I got this Pittsburgh uh, bike set. Um, it's kind of like a pass-through socket. They're really shallow. Uh, they come in different sizes. This has a 16 is what we need. Uh, as you can see right here, this gives us access to the, the spot right here that's on top to hold it. And with the needle nose pliers, you're gonna go in there and hold that and kind of use it as a counter hold. Now, the downside of this is that it sucks. If you're lucky, you'll be able to get it and turn it and break it loose just like that now that that's removed the next step of this process is to remove the built-in uh, not the built-in but the actual bump stop that's underneath so you're gonna need to cut off the zip tie that's on here Pull that out, remove the bump stop. And we're gonna end up reusing this whole entire setup right here, okay? Uh, next, we're gonna get our new shocks and then start the install in reverse. All right, so 
with the factory bump stop removed this is now your choice if you want to use the factory covers or not um, these guys have a big old dust cover like this from the factory the SolarWorks uh, coils already have a dust cover it's 100% your choice if you want to leave that on uh, leave the factory one on or remove it I'm gonna leave it on it's not gonna cause any issues that way we just have the entire shock covered um, for just dust in general so that way it's just a better situation for us um, so if this ever goes all the way down it's not gonna affect anything because it only goes a little bit more than halfway down so not gonna damage anything so now they provide you with the brand new nylock right here for the top now this is different this does not have that little uh, metal pin that holds it in place so you, so you can counter lock this actually has an allen port you guys can see that so that way you can use the same socket i believe this is still a 16. if not nope it's bigger we're going to, have to go a little bit bigger hopefully i have the socket for that this is the kit that i was talking about right here uh, it's called a uh, go through socket set from uh, harbor freight awesome awesome little set for like 20 bucks um, i've used this a lot for suspension jobs just because the, the the nature of the sockets are really nice yep i got the 17 right there so Allen set. Hmm. Odd. Because I have a five and it fits, but it's just a bit too big. So it might be standard versus metric. Very odd. Very odd indeed. Let me see if I can use my standard size set, which I very, very rarely use, and I mean with that. Yeah, this is not a uh, metric, this is standard. So pay attention to that guys. Very important because that sucks. <laughs> Makes life a little harder. Not much harder, but a little bit. All I'm doing is using the Allen wrench to hold the shaft from spinning pretty much. I just make my way down. So now you got it here to the bottom and then give them a good a good tighten. Might need a bigger socket here. Hold it. There we go. And there you have it. Just like that, guys. Plain and simple. Repeat the process for the second one, and then let's get ready to install these bad boys. All right, so now we're back here and installing the spring. Now the spring is super simple. On the spring itself, there's a flat side 
and there's a round side on the bottom. The flat side is what actually points straight up because you're going to be using the perch uh, for the, the actual spring right here. So this perch has a rubber grommet, you guys can see this, that lines up up here. Down all the way down below here, you're going to have the actual spring perch. Now this spring perch locks the spring, so turn it until you can't turn it anymore. That's where the spring locks. Uh, that's just strictly for you guys so the spring doesn't um, lose its actual alignment and you just put it in there and you're done. And then put the shock in. In the same way that you guys installed, removed it, just reverse it. Um, I recommend installing it on the tower first, on top here, and then down below. Alright, so we're back. So we got the bolt on top bolted down nice and snug now we're gonna actually install the spring and the shock now same way that you guys held it in place is the same way you're gonna reverse install it since this is a shorter shock um, you're gonna have to jack this up slowly as you're doing it make sure you do both sides at the time um, when this thing is going this perch is gonna go up because what's gonna happen is that that side over there is not gonna line up correctly and you're gonna damage something so as you're going up, be vigilant on both sides as the beam is starting raising up, okay? So right now I got the perch already lined up inside here. The shock tower is still not in, ready to go in. But I'm going to go really quick over to the driver's side and double check. All right, spring is actually going in on its own. Coming back. So as we're going up, we're gonna be compressing stuff, so taking your time. Now, while you're going up, look on the driver's side, make sure that shock is still lining up and in form with this guy on the other side. So we only got about little tiny pump to go almost there now what you want to do make sure it just threads in in place for you doesn't want to go in like all bad just make sure it threads in nicely by hand remember everything has to go in by hand first before you use any tools once that's done you're gonna take off this and you'll see the shock should be holding it in place right now we haven't tensioned anything down here or tightened everything down on this side we have to repeat over there because now the beam is kind of sitting sideways because, again, this is still not 100% identical on both sides when you tension it. So you have to go over there to the other side and repeat the process to mount this shock. So now that we got everything done, we installed the bottom bolt. We installed the two top ones, the spring. Now for height, I went about six threads down from the base of the perch all the way down to the threads here. So six is this gap right here. I might have to go a little bit higher. I don't know yet. I typically do about quarter inch to an inch uh, of tension usually when I do uh, um, coilovers and then adjust from there. So I'm hoping that that is the right height for the rear. I don't want to do this again. But again, as always, you never know until you start doing it. Um, the reason why, again, you have to use uh, TDI ones is because of this tank this tank right here you sit really really close to it and you guys can see right there there's like a good like two finger gap if you use GTI springs or mark 6 setup your springs are a little bit wider so you have a chance of hitting this tank so it's kind of a risk if you guys want to take it or not if you guys want to use mark 6 setup I don't recommend it but again it is something you guys can try out um, let me know if you guys use a Mark 6 setup and it works really well. 
uh, please comment down below for that. I would like to hear about that if you guys did it to do it on a Golf Sport Wagon TDI Mark 7 chassis though. All right, so now uh, everything's done here. Uh, remember on the driver's side to reinstall your height adjustment for the headlights if you have it, all right? Now we're gonna put the wheels on. All right, so on now we're on the front part of the suspension. Just like on the Mark 6 platform, you're gonna have the three bolts on top. You're gonna need to take this rubber bush uh, grommet off pull the flap open and then unbolt those do not do these first do these last just to give you guys a heads up they're 13 millimeter bolts so may remember that down below is where it's just exactly like a mark six so if you've ever done a mark six suspension you know exactly what to needs to be done first things first unbolt the end link which is held by an 18 millimeter bolt right here once you do that you're gonna get a, four, a triple square 14 right here and an 18 millimeter socket. Counter lock, counter break loose and then get that bolt out. Down below, right here on the ball joint, 316s is what's needed. You need to do this first on both sides before you attempt to remove the actual uh, uh, shock right here or the strut because what's gonna happen is the sway bar right here is gonna prevent you from pushing all the way down uh, to get this guy out. Um, just like on the Mark 6 platform, uh, this sway bar kinda, if you, leave it, if you leave the other side bolted in, this won't allow it to move up and down and it's gonna prevent the control arm from going all the way down so you can get the spindle all the way down and get the shock out. You wanna leave, the, leave it bolted in on top for the reason is that when you go down, this stays nice and firm and it allows you to push it all the way down. If you live on the East Coast and you got a little bit of rust in here, soak it right here with some WD-40 or some penetrating oil. I recommend PB Blaster especially, uh, one of my favorite uh, penetrating oils out there. Soak it on the side of here and then get a chisel and a hammer. That way you can uh, break loose the back and open up the uh, the spot right here to pry this open more and then that way you can pull the strut out nice and smooth so let me get the other side done and then we'll show you guys what to do next so now that we got everything pretty much unbolted all around the suspension we have to unbolt or pry out the ball joint here so kind of want to do it like this Kind of get it out of the way if you can. And the reason for this is that this is going to allow us to go further down uh, as we push down on the control arm like this. This will give us the travel that we need to go further down. Um, this control arm is a lot stiffer than, <laughs> than, the, than the previous generation, so it might be a little bit more difficult than than last time. So we'll see. Um, so we need to do the, we gotta spread the strut, that way we can loosen the, uh, the strut and get it out. And then we're gonna have to figure out how to push this uh, control arm further down as we work our strut down as well, or the spindle down as well, all at the same time. Um, yeah, cause this is kinda stiff. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a little difficult today. So hopefully I can figure it out in a timely manner. You guys can see that better. Yeah, so this is the issue right here is the, the control arm. Again, it's very stiff uh, in comparison to the previous gen and it's gonna be a little difficult to get this down. So we'll see how it works out right now in just a bit. Out. We got the shred out. So what you're gonna need to do, unbolt the control arm down here with the ball joint. Take off the tie rod, and then you gotta unbolt the axle. The axles on these uh, on these Mark Sevens are much much shorter than the previous generation, so they don't give you this up and down slack to pull this guy uh, the strut out. It really sucks. It really really does suck. Um, just pre warning you guys, it's a lot harder than I thought it would be, but I got it out. Again, you have to unbolt the axle 
from the back. I didn't have a axle nut for, uh, socket for this guy, so I had to unbolt it from the back. Once you unbolt it, it gives you all the leeway that you need. Um, I mean, as you can see, I mean, I got tons of space. It was super easy once I got it unbolted. Um, now we gotta take the three bolts off the top and then install the new shocks, or new struts. Um, now here is the orientation for your coilover that's super, super important before you actually install them, even before you put the top hat together. So when you take this whole entire strut assembly apart from the factory, it comes with a bushing underneath. This is the actual bearing and the strut top. You need both to install your coilover. Now this bushing is extremely vital like, uh, on top of it being a bearing for rotation, but it's very, very important because it gives you the alignment for your car. Um, you'll see here, uh, there's a little notch. You see this little square notch? You'll see this here, this notch goes inside that. And the way you know, there's the two arrows right here. Those are extremely important when you're assembling your coilover. Now, those two arrows, pretty much these two bolts right here, are what goes on this side of your uh, strut here, this one and this one. Make sure you know that and keep an eye on that uh, when you're doing this. Ooh, that fell right through there. That sucked. <laughs> we'll figure it out later. Um, and that's how you install your orientation for your coilovers. Now, when removing the stock strut, I didn't film this because I ended up taking a lot longer than normal, so I didn't want to take forever. You need a 24 millimeter 12 point. You need to unbolt the axle. Okay, guys? You need the front and back play. These axles that come on this car are extremely tough. They don't uh, have any leverage left and right, I mean, forward and back. So you have to remove the axle bolt on both sides uh, so you can get the amount of le uh, height from here to pull the stock strut. The stock strut is a lot longer than the fact than the aftermarket coilovers, just so you guys know. Once you do that, uh, it'll be easier. You're also gonna need to remove the tie rod. Now what's gonna happen when you unbolt this and you take it all apart, the brake line and the brake sensor here are going to be extremely tight so be careful not to um over tighten these or over extend them because you can cause some fun damage possibly a new brake line um i almost did so i just want to give you guys a heads up i ended up pulling the cable just a bit hard but it didn't start leaking at all so i'm pretty happy with that um so that's not a big deal <sighs> Whew. let's see here so ball joints unbolted everything else as a previous video we showed you how to unbolt everything but you the next step is to remove the axle bolt just remember that it's extremely important during this process lowered on SolarWorks coils about a two inch drop from stock height uh we put the beetle disc wheels and we're i think we're gonna rock them without the caps for right now I'm going to try to design or find a way to get caps that fit in here and kind of change it up a little bit. I did not like the way that the caps look on this car since this car has a little bit more harsher lines versus round lines. The caps didn't uh, really complement the car very much, but without the caps, it's not bad at all. Looks like a good, like just little sporty wheel on here. Um, again, very, very happy all around. Now we have, instead of four fingers, we have two fingers of space, uh, roughly. Yeah, nice and nice and tight with two fingers. I don't wanna go any lower than that, since we are gonna be taking the car out on a, on a trip for about 3,000 miles packed. Um, so it's gonna squat a little even more down once we pack it. So I want the extra travel when we're ready. But yeah, she looks good, she looks good, good car. So, thanks for watching this episode of Pinchy House Garage. Tuning, uh, we're not tuning, installing coilovers on a Mark 7 Golf Sport Wagon uh, with a solid rear beam. If you like this video, please hit that subscribe and notification bell down below. And as always, we're here at Pinchy House Garage. We're going to break, we're going to fix, and we're going to repeat. And there's Mark. What's up? <laughs> Peace out, everyone. Have a wonderful day.